Today we're talking about why the INFJ falls into hermit mode so often. And when I'm talking about hermit mode, I'm really talking about you feeling that way. Because it's one thing what society thinks of it, right? We as INFJs by default are not people who want to hang out with others all the time. We need a lot of time for ourselves. We need a lot of time in seclusion, but that's not an issue. The issue is when you get to a place where you feel isolated, where it doesn't feel good. But it sort of feels like the better choice because the alternative would be that you're just hanging out with people that you don't like, that you're doing things that you don't wanna do, and that you fall into a rhythm that has nothing to do with what is in your soul and who you want to be. But the thing is this, although hermit mode is something better than the worst thing that could be, you deserve better, you can have better. And when I say better, I mean on your terms, that you feel completely connected, that you feel like you're getting all the connection that you deserve, but you still have the time that you want. So today we're going to talk about why the INFJ falls into hermit mode, why this is actually a step up from, let's say the situation that could be really wrenching to your soul, and how you can improve all of that and get everything that you want. Before we get started though, I wanna remind you if you haven't done this so far to download the poster on the five pillars to an INFJ epic life. And if you wanna take it to the next step, then get the INFJ epic life audio guide. All the information you find in the links in the description. So let's first talk about the three steps that we're going to go into today. And they are dependence, independence, and interdependence. Dependence is the first step, and this is actually where most people live, and not just INFJs, I mean people in general. This is the place where you feel obligated to follow rules, unspoken rules, unwritten rules, rules that make you part of society, rules that make you not feel abandoned. And we have to be honest with ourselves, we are at the end human, right? That means we have this need for inclusion, we have the need to be not abandoned. These are just psychologically deep and great things within us, INFJ or not. So it very often happens that we fall into this category and that will lead us to make compromises that are not good for our soul. So those are the typical situations when we end up in codependent relationships, when we give ourselves up in order to make others feel good. This is something that particularly happens for INFJs, as in this is the way we include ourselves. This is how we become dependent. Others do it in different ways, but this is something that, you know, for INFJs, most of the time, that's what it looks like. We forget who we are. We try to make it as comfortable as possible for everybody else. And therefore we get included. We have some kind of connection and, you know, things are sort of working out. There are two main problems with this. The first one is we're not really happy with the situation, we're not. Like when you're in this situation, you still feel alone. This is the typical thing when an INFJ says, I understand everybody, I'm there for them. I understand their deepest desires and problems, but nobody understands me. That's when an INFJ feels really vulnerable and alone and you know, lonely. So this is the stage of dependence. The next step is independence. And this is a very important step. And a lot of INFJs take that step throughout their life when they say, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm not. But that means I have to be independent. I have to be okay to a certain level to be alone. I have to be okay to be isolated. I have to be able to survive, although I'm not making those compromises anymore. And this is definitely a step up. You feel the difference. You feel that this makes you feel even better because this dependent state always comes with pain. You always have to do something that you don't want. You're not being appreciated. Your interests are not being valued. You don't even know your interests. This is what I call hollowing yourself out completely. And we've all been there. I know I have. And you know, the thousands of INFJs that I work with, this is something that comes up over and over again. Not being aware of what you want, doing things to make other people comfortable, and you know, therefore not being in a position where you and your gifts are being appreciated, right? That's why so many INFJs get bullied when they're kids because there's still this need of, I sort of need to belong. Even if you think, oh, but I've always ducked my head down. I've always made it a point not to be in other people's faces. You know, to some level you see 
how in those times you were probably misunderstood more, bullied more, not liked, you know, and you had these issues with yourself of why doesn't anybody like me? When you get to the next stage, the independent stage, these things are not happening anymore or not to such an extent. And believe it or not, that is hermit mode. It is not the first step that we're doing. The first step is where you're trying to be somebody you're not. And in order to fit in, you're willing to do things that, you know, are soul crushing and are not good for you. And we all have to sort of forgive ourselves for having been in this situation or being in that situation, particularly when we were younger, because we just didn't have the experience. We weren't aware cognitively what was going on. All that we saw and understood was, okay, I'm trying my best here. I'm trying to be friendly. I'm trying to be kind. And the people around me don't accept it. Sometimes you try to do this by being overly kind. Sometimes you do it by being, you know, the class clown, whatever it may be, right? The hermit mode is the next one. It's the point when you say, that's enough. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. And I will turn my back. It might mean that I'm not going to be part of the social club, whatever that might be in your circumstance, um, but I'm not doing that. I'm going to go my own way and I'm not going to allow people access to my life and my soul, right? And this is, as I said, a very important step because you get to heal in this place. You get to recognize how much you can actually do for yourself and give for yourself and how much peace you really deserve. Because at this place, yes, you're not connecting with others in the capacity you used to. But you know, it wasn't genuine to begin with because you connected to them through their lens, through the way they saw life, not the way you saw life. So of course it always came at this price of, okay, you know, there's a connection, but there's not really a connection with me, right? I'm just adapting myself in order to make them feel connected. So you get to the second step and this is a place of healing. This is a place of, you know, being by yourself. A lot of people meditate a lot in this state and really get to a place where they learn, you know, seclusion is a good thing. It's good and you get addicted to it because you don't want to have this constant, you know, aggravating situation around you. You don't want to feel like you're not being valued and that face can get addictive real fast. But the problem with this is that it's not that satisfying. You get to this place and then you feel like, okay, what now? I've secluded myself. I don't have connections. I don't open up. You know, you're still not sharing yourself because you're saying, okay, I used to share myself and I got stomped on, so I'm not going to do that anymore. And so a lot of INFJs get to this place and that's pretty much it. And in their mind, okay, I've actually made like an improvement. This is better than what I used to do. Now I know for sure that people are not going to bother me. People are not going to, you know, take advantage of what I'm trying to do because I'm just not going to connect with people in this way. I'm not going to open myself up to this kind of vulnerability. And so since there is this upgrade, a lot of INFJs feel like that's the best I can expect. I am an INFJ, you know, I'm a martyr, I'm a conflicted soul, I'm an empath. That's just the place I'm going to end up with psychologically. And it's easy to get to this conclusion. And I've been there and I know this feeling of, okay, I just have to settle with this. But the truth is we don't. We don't have to settle with this because there is a third step. You have the state of dependence that we said, okay, a lot of INFJs go through this, understand that this is not the way where we hollow ourselves out. Then there's this independent state where you say, I'm trying as much as I possibly can isolate myself from others. I create this emotional space that is just for me and I can survive. It's actually better than before. And I just have to get used to it, right? But then there's the third place the interdependent state. And that is something that a lot of INFJs haven't really experienced because it is scary, because it happens from a state that most of us haven't experienced. Hopefully, all my videos speak from a place of interdependence because this interdependence comes from a place where it's all about, yes, I make sure that there is a space around me that is never up for debate. That is just for me. Like I'm going to fill up this space. I have to like myself enough to make sure that there are certain things that are not up for discussion and they're me. And if somebody doesn't like it, then they don't have to, but I like it because I know it's good for my soul. 
And that is not necessarily what the independent stage is all about because the independent stage is also about saying, yeah, there are certain parts of me that, you know, are normal for me that are who I am, but I'm not sharing them with others. Why am I not sharing them? Well, if you think about it, because you think you're going to get scrutinized, you think you're going to get judged for them. So there's still this dependence of what people are going to think of me. And don't get me wrong. Of course, I'm talking in very, black and white kind of terms. It's not like anybody of us is ever completely independent from other people's opinions or that we're ever like in this place where we're completely independent. But you know, we have like those tendencies. So when you get to a place where you say, I'm ready for the next step, like I've seen, I've created enough balance for myself to be able to live in this hermit mode. And you know, it's not the best life. It's definitely an improvement, but Worst case scenario, I'm going back to that. I'd rather be in this independent stage, in this hermit mode, than to adapt myself to such an extent in order to make other people comfortable. But once you get there and once you have the security, you can then take the next step and say, I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to open up, but it's different than before. I'm not going to go out of my way and say, I want you to like me because of everything that I do for you or because I see you or because I appreciate you. No, what you're saying is I'm creating an amazing life and I'm inviting people to join me in this. See, you're not forcing anybody to compromise to you. You're not doing anything that will make other people dependent on you. What you're saying is I'm looking for an interdependent relationship with every person that I meet in my life. And that is based on the fact that I will act in a way that makes me feel good about myself. I voice what matters to me. I'm not looking left or right in order to find out what is acceptable, but I decide for myself, you know, I like to live a life that's out of the box. I like to live a life that isn't governed by unwritten or unspoken social rules. No, I'm creating an INFJ epic life for me. That means I decide how many relationships I want to have, how I want to have them. I decide how I want to create wealth. You know, for a lot of INFJs, that means like not the typical, you know, lifestyle. It means maybe working less than a normal person, having different goals, having a different understanding of what a happy life is and not compromising that for anything. And to then say, but I'm not hiding it. I'm not hiding it anymore. I'm not hiding it how I used to when I was in hermit mode because I think nobody's going to understand me. People will judge me and the list goes on and on. You get to a place where you understand all of those feelings that you have about judgment come from you. Because if somebody would judge you on something that you didn't care about, it wouldn't really bother you, right? If somebody came up to me and say, why are you not blonde? Okay, like, I don't care, not my thing. But if somebody would have come up to me, particularly five, six years ago, and would have said, Wences, is you're a bad person. You're selfish. You're just thinking about yourself. You're not a very warm person. You're cold hearted. This would have hit me a lot. And it made me do things and it made me not do things in order to protect myself from this kind of feeling, right? From people thinking this about me, because that was mirroring back to me my biggest fears, which were I'm too cold. I'm, you know, selfish. I'm actually not interested in what everybody else is doing. I'm just doing this in order to get friends, right? So when you get to this place, you slowly start to address these feelings. You say, okay, I'm going to put myself out there in one way or another. It might be that I just open up more, that I share some interests of mine, that I share what I like, that I share things that I know certain people are going to find controversial, but that's just who I am. And I'm not going to keep it inside because I know people are not going to like it because everything that you keep inside is one more thing that doesn't allow you to connect with people through who you really are. And then you start taking those steps and then you actually start feeling those emotions of judgment. You start feeling that whatever you create, whatever you share is never as perfect as it was in your mind. But that is not the point. The point is that you say, I'm sharing myself. I'm sharing my gifts. I'm sharing the way I see the world. And yes, certain people will back off, but other people will accept you for who you are. You know, when I first started this for the first time, my friends told me, yeah, you really are different. And those are friends that I've had for 10, 20 years. 
So for the first time, they actually saw me. Before I was telling them, yeah, I'm different. You know, I like things differently than you, but they never experienced that. Once I started acting this way, once I started living my life differently, that's when they recognized it. But they still said, yes, there are certain things that we cannot connect with, but there are other things that we really appreciate about you. And I'm going to accept you as this full package. And on top of that, for the first time, people were able to connect with me who would have never been able to connect with me before because I would have kept everything hidden. I would have kept all of those parts of me to myself, being in this hermit mode in order to protect myself from judgment. So when you're in this place, always think about it. Yeah, it's like a safe place to be in a hermit mode and it's totally okay. It's not like you haven't done anything in sense of you know self-development. This is already a step up, but now it's time to say, okay, I deserve more. I deserve to decide what makes me happy. And if I personally don't think that I have the connections that I want, that I have the love in my life that I want. And trust me, this love isn't about just one person. It really is about life. The more connections you have that are authentic to you, the less you're going to be vulnerable to this one person that might see you for the first time and might save you. We're not going for that. You deserve so much more. So remember, dependence, independence, interdependence. And the interdependence part is where we really start living in our zone of genius, where we start creating our INFJ epic life. If you want some more guidelines how to get there, remember to download the poster on the five pillars. And if you wanna take it to the next level, then get the INFJ epic life audio guide that will help you to make that transition happen. All the information you find in links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then watch the video, why the INFJ gets caught up in toxic fantasies.